this material characterization course. In the last two classes, we reviewed about the electromagnetic lenses and its uh, function, fabrication and some of the parameters which controls the electromagnetic lenses, how it is being used in the electron microscope, a kind of introduction with little more details we have gone through. Now, from this class onwards, we will just start the scanning electron microscopy where all this electromagnetic lenses we have seen will be used. So, before I just start this lectures on fundamentals of uh, scanning electron microscopy, I would like you to carefully go through what is shown on this slide. So, before we get into any of this uh, electro electron optics or uh, electron optics based instrumentation, uh, which is used for imaging uh, of materials to reveal the microstructure details. First, we should know uh, about the interaction of an electron beam with a solid. It is a very gentle information which one should remember. I will tell you the importance of this the moment I finish this discussion here. So, look at this uh, schematic. What is shown in this slide is uh, you have uh, a specimen and then this is an incident uh, high energy electron beam which is falling on the sample and then you get to see quite a bit of uh, signals or which is coming out of this uh, uh, sample in all the directions. <coughs> So, I would like, like you to carefully look at each one of them. So, what we are seeing is uh, within this volume of the sample, what we have written is an absorbed electrons. Some that means some electrons are being absorbed by the specimen and some of them actually you get uh, electron hole pairs generation and then you see a secondary electrons, characteristic x rays, visible light, and then you have back scattered electrons, and then you have elastically scattered electrons, and then you have a direct beam, and you have inelastically scattered electron, and then you have Bremsstrahlung x rays. So, by looking at this, you just uh, see that when a high energy electron beam interacts with the specimen, it is always true that all these signals are generated. It is this, the detecting system which you employ to collect them and use them for imaging or analysis that characterizes the particular characterization equipment. For example, you just see that uh, the visible light we used so for an optical microscope, a characteristic x-rays can be used for n number of spectroscopic techniques to analyze the chemical details or chemistry of the specimen in a very, very high resolution of the, uh, in the materials which are, I mean, which, which may contain very minute or trace elements. So, in order to characterize them, we may use this uh, characteristic x-rays. We will look at that uh, all the spectroscopic technique in a different uh, uh, lecture series, but you just see here, this is also one of the important uh, signals which you get out of the electron beam specimen interaction. And then this backscattered electrons and this secondary electrons are being used in SEM and then you see that OJ electrons are used in OJ electron spectroscopy and then a direct beam which comes from the specimen is used in the transmission electron microscopy and you have all this 
other signal also being used in the transmitted electron microscopy for different applications, we will look at that in an appropriate time. So, I just want you to uh, look at all this uh, signals which is coming out of the specimen, these can be broadly categorized into two segments. One is a forward scattering signals, all these are just direct beam inelastically scattered electron, elastically scattered electrons. These are all forward scattering signals and then you have a backward scattering signals. So, out of these two categories, the, the scanning electron microscopy uses only the, the backward scattering signals. So, this is primary important information one should have before we get into the details. So, all the other signals are not used in the scanning electron microscopy. We will see the details one by one, but as an introduction you should know in general when an electro, I mean high, high energy electron beam interacts with the specimen, all these signals are coming out and then the kind of detecting system which we use actually defines the characterization tool whether it is a scanning electron microscopy or a transmission electron microscopy or any spectroscopy, specific spectroscopy which where we look at the chemistry of the uh, specimen. So, this is primary important uh, a concept you have to understand before we get into the a specific characterization tool. So, with this introduction I would like to start the scanning electron microscopy and uh, let me just uh, go to the blackboard and then write few things and an introductory remarks.
So, in an introduction to the scanning electron microscopy, we should know what are its unique capabilities. Why do we opt for a scanning electron microscopy investigation in comparison to a light optical microscopy? The primary objective is to obtain the magnification with a high resolution. So, in a very a simple terms, you can you can obtain uh, microscopic details, a uh, 3D like images. We will see how this effect comes and what are the parameters which contribute to this phenomenon or an effect I would say. Magnification in the range of 10 x to 10,000 x and more in fact, uh, it could be more also. Typically, the signals are obtained from the specific emission volumes within the samples and can be used to examine the sample in terms of surface topography, crystallography and composition etcetera. So, these uh, unique characteristics uh, we could not do with a light optical microscope. And what is surface topography? The surface unevenness. So, you can just imagine what we have seen in a light optical system. If you recall, we just polished the metallic specimen with the different kinds of uh, emery sheets, right. So, the final emery sheets, which had very fine uh, ceramic. Uh, particles embedded in that sheet and then we just rubbed the sample against them and then that sample appeared almost like shiny and so on. With our uh, naked eye, the sample looked very polished and so on. Then we, what we did it, we also put that sample under the optical microscope, then we could observe the very, very closely spaced scratches. I would say this closely spaced and impression which was observed like if you put the same sample under the SEM you will see that uh, there are hills and valleys because we are looking at at the very high magnification and uh, rather a high resolution we are looking at it we are able to observe the a small hills and valleys that is surface topology. So, this is one classical example you can just go and look back. This can be. So, any surface unevenness to the very micron to nanometer scale can be analyzed and also the crystallography of the specimen and, the, and its chemistry can be analyzed with the scanning electron microscope primarily. So, what, what, what are the parameters which enables this microscopy to do that? We will see that.
So, what are the typical signals we are going to get from the SEM? Secondary electrons, backscattered electrons, X rays, and other photons of varying energies. Just you look at that uh, slide again, what I have just uh, shown here. This is secondary electrons, backscattered electrons, characteristic X rays, and other photons of varying energies. See, each radiation will have very specific energies which we will talk about. So, the primary signals which is coming out of this uh, SEM as I said, it is a backscattered signal or backscattering signal, ba sorry I would say backward scattering signals, let it be very clear because uh, there is another uh, particular signal is named as backscattered electrons. So, you should not con confuse with this because this is only coming the backward you know scattering. This is what I meant, all these signals are backward scattering signals which are being primarily used in SEM. So, only these three signals are primarily used in an SEM. Of course, they, they are characterized based on their energy that we will see in an appropriate time. And out of all this backward scattering signals, only we talk about S yes, secondary electrons and back scattered electrons. Why? Why are we talking only about this? Because they vary primarily as the result of difference in the surface topography. The amount of secondary and backscattered electrons which is coming out of the specimen surface is primarily depending on the surface topology. This is the, the core idea behind using this too. And what are the other important things? So, the other important information you get from the SEM is the X-rays that is characteristic X-rays come from a sample can yield both qualitative and quantitative information from the region of 1 micrometer diameter and 1 micrometer depth. This is a, a rough indication uh, you get what is the region size from which you get this information which is of in the order of 1 micrometer diameter and 1 micrometer depth from the surface. So, these are the information you get from this in general from ACM and we look at the what are the imaging capabilities.
So, if you look at the imaging capabilities of this uh, microscopy, the major reason for the SEM's usefulness is the high resolution in the order of 1 to 5 nanometers. And another important feature of SEM is the, the large depth of field. We have already discussed in the fundamentals of the optics, we have seen what is depth of field, how it is being exploited in an electron microscope. In fact, the what we have just uh, stated in the beginning, 3D like images, it is partly because of this effect, you have high or very large depth of field uh, in an SEM. We will also see it uh, using a ray diagram, how it enables this effect when we discuss the other functions of SEMs in the coming classes. And the SEMs are becoming very popular because of the, the advances in the signal processing and amplification, like the kind of signals you receive, second electrons, back to second electrons or X-rays. And then you have uh, advanced processing, signal processing and amplification detectors and then gun design, etc. So, with that all these advances, uh, this SEMs can also do uh, imaging something like using electron channeling contrast by varying the crystal orientation and also magnetic contrast from the magnetic domains in the uniaxial and the cubic materials. So, these are all some of the, the highlights of the imaging capabilities of uh, the SEM. You will see that uh, next is structural analysis.
Okay. If you look at the what are the structural analysis one can do with this hesium, it has got a capability to determine the crystal structure and grain orientation of the crystals on the surface. Please understand, you have to remember that it is all whatever the information you obtain is only from the surface with a very limited volume. You will just understand that uh, in much more detail as we go into this uh, lectures. And then the diffraction of the backscattered electrons emerging from the sample surface, electron backscattered diffraction EBSD with a low intensity also enables this uh, capability. And uh, since it is a low intensity, we have very high sensitive CCD camera recording. This is a charge coupled device camera records the backscattered, a so called Kikuchi pattern, which is nothing but this signal. And it is analyzed with the computer based indexing method. And then you have today SEMs with advanced indexing and uh, computer assisted crystal lattice orientation mapping that is called EBSD maps, which allow this technique to identify the phase and the misorientation across the boundaries. So, this is also very powerful technique today and, uh, and it has been applied everywhere. This itself uh, a separate research domain, people can uh, extensively use this and very powerful technique as far as uh, uh, SEM structural analysis is concerned. And what else we can do with the SEM? So, so far we have seen imaging capabilities, structural analysis and finally, Elemental analysis.
So, if you look at the elemental analysis capability of an SEM, you can get the complete compositional information using characteristic X-rays. The tool generally referred as electron probe micro analysis EPMA, which can get the chemical composition from the very localized region and then provide a complete chemical analysis. And then you have this uh, EPMA is specially outfitted SEM with light optics and one or more WDS, WDS units, wavelength dispersive spectrometer. We will see all this uh, variants of the spectrometers uh, as I mentioned, which uses the characteristic X-rays which comes out of the sample and then do the chemical analysis. We will look at them in a, a separate lecture series, but then these are all the attachment, one of the primary attachment to the SEMs. This one, the another one is energy dispersive spectrometer, which can detect the elements greater than 4 atomic number, collect the characteristic X-rays from the major elements, approximately you should have about 10 weight percent, whereas the WDS measures X-rays from the minor or even a trace elements of 0.1. 8 percent. So, this WDS is much more uh, powerful compared to EDS. We will see why and so all these details uh, later, but these are all the basic details one should have about the when you look at the capabilities of an scanning electron microscope. I have few more points to add in this uh, segment.
So, the, the final point to the elemental analysis with a modern EPMA, you can get a, a quantitative information from your specimen within a spatial resolution of the order of 1 micrometer with the accuracy of the order of 1 to 2 percent the amount present. And also this uh, EPMA has a capability of analyzing the very low atomic number elements like boron, carbon, oxygen because the WDS spectrometer uses a large interplanar spacing diffractors a typically organic uh, crystals which has got a large interplanar spacing which enables long wavelength x-rays from the low atomic number elements. Since this low atomic number elements has the characteristic x-rays of large wavelength or long wavelength. So, these crystals enables the diffraction possible and then and they can be measured with the WDS. So, these are all the, the basic capabilities of uh, a scanning electron microscope. Uh, so, I have just put them into three categories, one is imaging capabilities and structural analysis and then composition analysis or elemental analysis. And ACMs are primarily used for only this purpose. Now, we will look at the some of the other introductory remarks. <coughs> As the sophistication of the investigations increased, the optical microscope often has been replaced by instrumentation having superior spatial resolution or depth of focus. So, the resolution of ACM can approach a few nanometer as I mentioned and it can operate at magnification that are easily adjust from about 10 x to 300,000 x. Of course, this can be a subject of uh, instrumentation, we will talk about it in an appropriate time. The depth from which all this information comes varies from nanometers to micrometers. This is also a subject to, to a specific instrumentation details, we will look at them in appropriate time. Likewise, the lateral resolution in this analytical modes also varies and is always poorer than the topological contrast mode. So, the principal images produced in an SEM are of three types, namely secondary electron images, backscattered electron images and then you also have elemental X-ray maps and these are the three primary images one can obtain in a normal SEM. Secondary and backscattered electrons are conventionally separated according to their energies. So, we will now see how this uh, will have some schematics to show how this SEM works. So, you have the two separate entities, one is a microscope column from the top to bottom, the other is a, a control console. So, you have the electron gun which comes uh, from the top of the equipment column, microscopic column and then you have uh, further all the electron lenses and a scan coil and the beam reaches all the way up to this chamber, specimen chamber which is maintained uh, at the with the vacuum of uh, 10 to the power minus 4 Pascal, which is uh, in the order of 1 billionth of the atmospheric pressure. So, 
for the for your reference and you have uh, on the right hand side you have the CRT screens viewing screens and then camera where all this uh, scanned images are being used. So, this is a primary uh, classification of this equipment microscopic column and a control console. And then you look at this uh, next schematic and you have this uh, a complete uh, schematic of the cross section of the uh, scanning electron microscope and uh, what you see is an electron gun which generates the electrons and accelerates to uh, typically from 0.1 to 30 kilo electron volts and then it is being passed through electron lenses also and also a scan coils. So, these electron lenses what they do is the, the probe diameter which is being produced by this uh, the tungsten hairpin typically it is not sharp enough to resolve the structures and these electron lenses demagnify to very sharp uh, spots or a sharp probe and then they are being rested onto this coil to the this specimen and then you have this uh, detector the signals which comes out of this specimen which is kept under the vacuum and then it amplifies and it goes to the display. We will continue the discussion of this uh, the general function of this scanning electron microscopy in next uh, class as well. Thank you.